All right, today we have a uh, Frigidaire oven. This is an office oven that, uh, for whatever reason, it's not working. So we're going to go through a little bit of testing. Uh, it's the oven uh, baking element or heating element that's not coming on, nor the broiler range is working. Uh, so there is something going on. We're going to go in and we're going to test the elements. Uh, just checking for resistance now to see if it's an open uh, or shorted circuit. All right, so this is the element that we're going to be testing. Uh, we've already unplugged the oven, so we have no power, uh, no chance of getting shocked. To make the job a little easier, we're going to take the door off here. There's some, uh, by the hinges, some little clips. To release, and then the door just lifts up. Give a little more room. All right, so now we're gonna remove the element. That's got two mounting bolts in the back. We're just going to pull it out nice and easy. So we have our two connections back here. All right, so we're going to set the uh, meter to the ohms uh, to check continuity. So we're about uh, 15, uh, almost 16 ohms there. So it's not shorted. All right, so we put the element back in. Uh, we're going to go to the back of the uh, oven and do some voltage tests to see why we're not getting voltage to it. All right, so to get to all the electronics, we're going to have to take off these back end plate. Uh, just a couple uh, bolts around the outsides. Uh, we'll take these panels off. All right, so now we know that the element uh, is not shorted. Uh, so we want to know why the uh, oven is still not working. So we're going to follow the power. Uh, most, if not all, uh, appliances have wiring diagrams on the back side of them uh, to give you a little uh, road map of how everything works. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug this back in, uh, making it a live uh, component there so we don't want to touch anything and get shocked and uh, you know end up in the hospital uh, so we're gonna check main power uh, then we're gonna check make sure we have power at the board our our elements uh, the broiler element uh, baking element uh, so we'll verify that we're getting power uh, to the control board then we'll activate the control board and check to see if power is coming out Okay, so we're energized now. Now we're going to set to our AC uh, current scale. So we have uh, 119 uh, volts on one leg. Uh, the center one is our neutral or our ground. Uh, the other leg, uh, 120, that makes our 240 circuit complete. Uh, so the power fi is fine there. Uh, so 
we'll stay on our neutral. Up at our control board, we have line in. So we have our 119 uh, volts there. That was line two. Well, check line one. 122 volts. Uh, so we have power to the board. All right, so now we want to turn the bake setting on so the oven is working. How do you do that? All right, so we set it at 200 degrees. All right, if everything was working correctly, we would have our power here. And we do not have power. So back onto the neutral. Uh, this is our bake setting, power going out. Okay, so we have our power making it to the one side of our element. The other side is the uh, line two. That is where we don't, looks like we're failing. All right, so it appears that our line two output uh, is not working. Uh, so we're not getting the full uh, 240. Our two lines are not uh, energizing to get the 240. Alright, so we've turned the uh, bake element off. Now we're going to unplug the oven again. That way we can work on it. What we're going to check now is just want to make sure that the temperature probe uh, for the oven is, n is uh, working uh, and intact. Uh, that would be one thing that would hold the logic board up from understanding what's going on. So we'll go back to ohms. I will disconnect the connector. We want to check it for resistance. Uh, we should have somewhere between 900 and 1200 ohms. All right, so we're looking at 1100. That tells the temperature sensor is uh, working correctly. Everything's pointing at having a bad uh, uh, oven control board, that EOC. Uh, so we will uh, replace that and, uh, and get the oven working. Okay. Right, so before we disconnect anything, uh, good practice, something I do. I take a picture of uh, you know, the wiring so that we have a reference point to go back to. Uh, just. Uh, just to ensure that all the wires are going to be in the same spot. Okay, so we're going to have to remove the cover. Uh, the new part comes with an adhesive to re-stick it back on. Uh, so we want to remove it. We just want to start with one edge and slowly start peeling it back. All right, so now we have the uh, cover removed. Now we will reinstall it onto the uh, new component.
Yeah, making sure everything is lined up again. And this new component does have a electrostatic warning, so we definitely want to keep away from touching uh, any of the electronics staying on the uh, outside housing. Uh, so we're ready to reinstall. All right, so when we're putting this back on, I want to make sure that we have even pressure, not too much. Uh, torque spec is very low on this. Just want to make sure that it's evenly tighten so there's no flex in the board and All right, so we're ready to plug the oven back in and test the element again. All right, so now we're gonna test to see if uh, the new component has fixed our problem of the oven not working. Uh, so we have a bake setting, let's say 200 degrees. Start, it shows that we're on. And we have some heat. All right, so we faulty uh, electronic oven control was uh, the problem there. So now, see our heaters working. We did have a light switch there. All right, so uh, new component installed. Everything is working. Doors back on. Uh, we're ready to go. Uh, you know, we've included a link below for the part that we replaced on this Frigidaire. Uh, but just be happy in knowing that our oven is working at Auto Parts direct to you.